All right, welcome back to this episode. Um, I'm going to go over this problem and then I'm going to do an irrational solution or a quadratic with an irrational solution. <laughs> Can't speak today. Um, I ran 13.1 uh, miles, so I'm a little tired. So please forgive me there. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and move all of my terms over so that I put this in standard form. So this is going to become x squared uh, plus 6x plus 10, and that's going to be equal to 0. All right, so that gives me an a value is equal to 1, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to 10. Using my quadratic formula, again, that's x is equal to um, negative b plus or minus. You're going to be hearing my voice in your sleep. <laughs> b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so let's uh, substitute and solve. So I'm going to say x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root 36 minus 4 times 1 times 10 all over uh, 2 times 1, which is 2. So then that's going to be negative 6 plus or minus the square root of um, negative 4 times 1 gives me negative 4. Negative 4 times 10 gives me 40. So this is going to be 36 minus 40 all over 2. Okay, That's then going to give me x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. Okay, so here's your little, like, star. Pay attention. I have a negative radicand. Whenever I have a negative radicand we, in the real number system, we cannot take the square root of a negative radicand. So this is no solution. This is 100% not solvable in the real number system. All right? And that is that problem. So now let's talk about irrational system solutions. Irrational solutions are solutions, okay? We're going to do a couple of easy ones, and then we're going to talk about some more challenging ones, okay? Uh, by challenging ones, then I mean that we have fractions involved, and I know how y'all don't like fractions. All right, so I have the quadratic equation x squared plus 4x plus 1, and that's equal to 0. Okay, so this doesn't seem so bad. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to 4, and C is equal to 1. Okay, so this is going to give me X is equal to negative uh, 4 plus or minus the square root 16 minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over um, four times or 2 times 1, which gives me 2. So then this is going to give me negative 4 plus or minus uh, the square root of 16 minus 4. 16 minus 4 is going to give me 12 over 2. Now, 12 is not a perfect square, but we want to be careful because we can simplify. Remember how when we talked about simplifying um, radicals, whenever we're simplifying the square root of 12, we want to look at the highest perfect square that goes into 12. Okay, the highest perfect square that will go into 12 is only 4. Okay? Sorry, not 4. 3. What am I thinking? 9. Sorry. Hold on. Wait. The highest perfect square that will go into that is um, 4. I was right to be in one. So 4, because 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. Now, the 4 is a perfect square of 2. So this would become 2 square root of 3. Now look at this. This looks real nice. So x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus this, uh, not 2. It's going to be 2 square root of 3 all over 2. Now, this is that situation where I can break up. So if I say negative 4 divided by 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 over 2, okay? These 2's cancel out. 
or let me do a different color so it's easier to see. 2 divided by 2 is gone. Negative 4 divided by 2 becomes negative 2. So this, fully simplified, becomes negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, we're going to go ahead and leave it where it's marked plus or minus. I, I think that you really would try to avoid writing it as negative 2 plus the square root of 3, comma, negative 2 minus the square root of 3. It's really important that you recognize that this plus or minus is both, and it's a way to shorthand again. Okay, now let's do another more challenging problem. Okay. Let's say we have x squared plus x plus 9, and let's say that's equal to 20. I'm going to put this in standard form, so that's going to become x squared plus x minus 11, and that's going to be equal to 0. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 11. Okay. So that's going to be x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 1 times negative 11. All over 2 times 1, which is going to give me 2. Okay. Uh, negative times a negative become a positive. So this is going to be a negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 45 over 2. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify the square root of 45. One of the things that could potentially be a hint is you can look at your denominator, but in this case, 45 is not divisible by 2, so the denominator is not really going to help us in this situation. Um, we know that 45 is divided by 5, so 45 divided by 5. 5 times uh, 9 gives us 45. We know 9 is a perfect square, so that means that my values for 45 are going to be 9 and 5. So this becomes minus 1 plus or minus 3 square root of 5 over 2. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and leave it. Because negative 1 half, that's as small as negative 1 half goes. It's not simplified. Um, like up here, and the first question that we did, we could simplify 4 is divisible by 2 and 2 is divisible by 2. So we wanted to break up that denominator just like normal fractions so that we can simplify it. Here, we still needed to simplify the radican, um, but once we've taken it to the simplest radical form, we can't simplify it any further. That coefficient with the square root of 5, 3 is not divisible by 2. So that's, we're done. x is equal to 